Hey community, we're back and I'm Brandy B, the community MP. And I'm Brandy G, the community MP. And together we are b, &B the, the community, community MPs. MPs. So today we're, we're going to continue our series um, with the urinary tract system. It's been a long series. It has been. <laughs> but today we're going to focus on UTIs in men. Okay. And it's usually called acute cystitis, which basically mm -hmm. is UTIs in men. And just means that the, the urinary tract infection is in the bladder area. Yes. Yes. Does it move from the bladder area? So that's what we're going to discuss today. Okay. All right. So I'm going to give a, little, a couple of facts about UTIs in men. Okay. So the first thing is, it's not very common in men. Mm -hmm. It occurs in a small population, usually ages 15 to 50. Um, let's see, five to eight out of 100,000 men may have a UTI. So that's not a lot not, at all. Not many. Five to Especially eight not in comparison. Out of 100, yeah, 1,000. And it why is that? Why is it that they don't have um, ur urinary tract infections like women? Well, they have a, their urinary tract is longer, so the bacteria has to travel for further, and usually they pee it out before, yes, yes. <laughs> before it gets So there. that's one of the reasons mm -hmm. that it's correct. And by the urinary tract being longer, they don't have the, the width to ha let bacteria grow mm -hmm. around that area. Like yeah. we may have bacteria growing in other places, you know, in that our can, vaginal area. Yeah, that can so men don't easy, have that. Easier to travel in yes. women. Yeah. And also their prostates produce an antibacteria um, substance, which also helps and prevents them from getting urinary tract infections. So that's so, good. Yeah. yeah, so that's why men don't get them as, as well. often, yeah. So, but if a man gets a recurrent infection, uh -huh. then you want to start thinking about a prostate infection. So usually they may have fever, uh -huh. um, pain, peritoneal pain. Uh -huh. um, what else, I don't know what else they may have. I think it's like fever, peritoneal pain. That may also yeah. put them at risk for um, infections. And then, um, I, isn't it that truck drivers and like bike riders and people like that get uh, infections in their prostate more often? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, probably because they're not using the bathroom. That and uh, what the what the what, yeah. what you call that? What you call that? The um, the what you call it? Sitting and. I don't know, the um, vibrations of the, the hydraulics. <laughs> yeah. No. Then being, you know, when you're on a bike, you're just like okay. hitting hard. There's got to be a word for it. I don't know. I, say, I, don't I know. say hydraulics. The hydraulics. Yeah, because you know how like the little spring go up yeah, and down? Yeah. I think that's it. And, like, and their body's going up and down. Yeah. <laughs> All right. But, All right. but yeah, back to UTIs All right. in men. So some of the risk factors. What puts, there's not many things that puts men at risk for UTIs, but two things that they did mention in up to date was you want to tell them the sexual intercourse so um that's if you're having anal intercourse so the the person doing the inserting yes and then also like if you haven't had it if you're not circumcised so yes. those are the two things that put you at risk okay and so some of the symptoms dysuria yeah uh what's what dysuria? is this <laughs> So it's pain on urination. Mm -hmm. Some type of discomfort or pain on urination mm -hmm. is just urea. And then going more frequently. Yes. Gotta and then, go, gotta go, gotta yeah. go right now. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and then just having that urge to go like really quick. So, uh, and then like you said before, the super pubic pain. Yes. And, and I already mentioned with the prostatitis, if you start to have re reoccurring yeah. infections, you always want to think about something's maybe going on with the prostate. Mm -hmm. You want to get that examined. And that's usually more serious than just a regular UTI in a yes, man. Yes. Okay. So physical exam. So how do you diagnose it? So you look at the symptoms and then, you know, collect urine okay. for an analysis. And okay. then which you, most people can do that. Most clinics can do that in clinic. Mm -hmm. And then most, I always send mine out for culture mm -hmm. just to see, you know, what bacteria it's is growing grow. and if we're treating it effectively. Okay. And so one of the things that I did notice was they say um, with men, their urinalysis usually show pyuria, which mm -hmm. is pus in the urine. Yeah. So, and also, you also want to check for STIs, yes. STDs, STIs. Because I mean, was can, growing up, it was STDs, but now yeah. it's STIs. Because they can present the same way. Yes, yeah. yes. Okay. So treatment B. So what's the difference between treatment in men and women? So the, basically, you know, both are treated with antibiotics, but because um, in men it's so rare that they get UTIs, it's usually a more aggressive. So you treat them for a longer period of time. Usually seven days for, yes. for most antibiotics. Right. What I didn't realize is, I, I guess I haven't had many men who had a urinary tract infection. I didn't mm -hmm. know you can give macrobid 
for, I guess, it's the same bacteria for yeah. men and women, but mm -hmm. I have never um, given macrobid for a UTI. Yeah. And I see that you can give it, but just give it for a longer period of time right, than yeah. in a woman. So, yeah. okay. And usually the back, the most common bacteria is E. coli. E. coli. And when yes. people see that, they're like, what? I got E. coli. Yes. <laughs> but that's actually the most common. So, um, with basically, that's all about mm -hmm. UTIs and men because it's not as common. So, there's not a lot of information about it because it's not yeah. as common. But we just, yeah. we didn't want to discriminate. <laughs> and just give information about the women yeah. and UTIs. So that's all we really have for UTIs and men. Yep. So disclosure. Remember that this information is only for educational purposes to share with family and friends yes. to spark a conversation. It does not take the place of your primary care provider, mm -mm. period. We need you to go and see your primary care provider so at least once a year to get an evaluation or exam, okay? Yes. So B, where can they follow us at? Everywhere. Where can they find us at? You can basically. find us. In the trap. No, I'm just no. kidding. <laughs> you, so you can find, you can find us um, on Facebook, Instagram, uh, YouTube, B&B, &B, the community MP. So yeah, like, share, follow, subscribe, reach yes. out to us. Um, give us some feedback. Tell us what you want to learn about, what questions you have, and share your experiences with us. Yes. And also, um, since we're doing the urinary tract um, system, we still have some briefs. I ain't gonna say diapers. Yes, briefs. Briefs available in a size extra large. So just DM us and let us know if you need some briefs. Preferably if you're in the DFW area, because there's a big old box. Yeah. So and we can just meet and give, give them, them to you. you. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, so that's it, guys. Have a great day.